I call the meeting to order 407. And reviewing to approve previous minutes. I make a motion that we delay the approval of the minutes until we can review them in the, later on in this meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Richard Harper, aye. Steve Crystal, aye. Jeremy Olson, aye. Got to get that approved. Uh, any ARPA updates? I know there was only a few thousand dollars left. No, no. Nothing's, nothing's the same. Okay. Uh, let's see. MVP hazard mitigation. I know uh, we were just waiting. I know it was approved. We were just waiting to get the final stamp from everything, but I know it all got approved. So we are a uh, MVP approved town. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, start to uh, wrap our heads around a first project for the uh, MVP, Nick, hopefully for next year. We have uh, several different things possible, you know, uh, Old Westbrook Field Road culvert. There's definitely some some pretty... Uh, this is what about, you know, I need some the place to send these to print. <laughs> um, send them to me. Sorry. No problem. Do you know the name of the printer in here? A uh, Richco first floor. Richco first floor. Uh, <laughs> is that easy? It's right here. No, I mean for me to, to find it up like that. In Word? Yeah, just go to print and then you'll get a list of printers. Was hazard mitigation also? Yes, I think it was pretty uh, much. No, what was left on that? No. Um, we needed. So I, I just looked on the MVP website, and the guy still, the state has not fully approved. They the didn't MVP. fully approve it. No, it, it yeah. has not been fully right. approved. It says still pending, still I don't know in planning stage. Okay, but based on information I've received from other colleagues. This is not a rare thing, you know. So them not right, right. moving so along. So we have to it. presume that the MVP is fine. Yeah. So well, there is still work to be done with regard to completing the hazard mitigation because uh, that's a different program. There are new restrictions that were instituted. And I think at last meeting I reported that uh, we were going to use another town as a model mm -hmm. uh, to see if CMRPC is doing what they want. Yeah. And then, then we come back and wrap up the warrants. So the CMRPC staff is still working on it. Um, and we're just waiting to, to get some further guidance from the hazard mitigation people. Do we know is that the, the hazard mitigation side, is that potentially what's kind of holding up the final stamp for MVP side? No, they're different. De totally different. Yep. Okay. No, no. Oh, yeah, because one's federal, one's state. That's exactly. right. Yeah. That's right. I'm just going to send it to Jim. So uh, I can print it up. Uh, okay. Open space and recreation planning. Lucy Stone updates. Well, Signs are in, right? Signs are in. Uh, today I had a meeting with uh, Joyce and uh, Tim O'Brien, and uh, we opened all the boxes and checked all the stands and all the uh, all the printouts and everything for the panels, and everything looks everything's there. Everything looks great. So at this point in time, we're just kind of uh, going to be waiting on the weather mm. for the highway department's going to install them. So there was. Um, a little bit of funding left, I know, to purchase some of the materials we need, like some concrete and things of that nature. Um, but then the actual installation is, we're doing that anyway. So everything looks like it's good to go. Uh, okay. said, um, Excellent. That's great. May I see an agenda, please? Please, uh, what we can, Jim's going to go up and 
uh, print some documents and seeing what we can uh, kind of juggle around if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Until Now the open space and recreation plan, we were looking at uh, future opportunities for that. I know we um, there was a few other parks and places in town we were looking at doing some stuff. Um, the other veterans park there in, on School Street, I know that's something that we're uh, redoing School Street obviously. So I'd like to be able to do something with that park. I don't know if there's any opportunities there. Where the high school was? Yeah. Okay. That, there's uh, that little nice little park going up the hill there. Mm -hmm. So it's. So as you know, um, as part of the open space and recreation plan, I myself conducted sort of a survey of our parks and open spaces. Yeah. Uh, for accessibility. Hello. Um, for, for, you know, essentially accessibility. I took some photos, I examined, and I, I determined that most of the parks and open spaces within the town are not up to current ADA standards and very likely would be eligible through both future CDBG as well as through the, uh, the, the what is it, Department of Cons Conservation and Recreation and Open Space. Yeah. Yeah, so DCR though, they require a local match yep. of approximately 25% for various initiatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I, I think certainly the town should consider doing some upgrades, you know, to at least come into compliance, like at the Veterans Park down in West Warren, making appropriate sidewalks so people can walk around safely, um, maybe gaining access to the Veterans Park here. Now uh, off of School Street, yeah. and uh, maybe some ADA picnic tables or benches. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we might know where to get some of those. I yes. understand. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a good source for that. So yeah, certainly we should be wise in thinking about what projects are good through Department of Conservation and Recreation, and what parks could be considered through other. Uh, larger grant programs like CDBG, mm -hmm. like Cutter Park, as an example. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think you know once Lucy Stone is wrapped up, and I think that certainly make the town eligible through the DCR next year. Okay. So excellent. So, a lot of opportunities. <clears throat> Chris, did you want to take uh, one stop for growth? Uh, FY23 Prospect Street, FY24 Otis Street, Master Plan. Uh, the rundown. Okay, on that. certainly. So, Massachusetts One Stop for Growth. Uh, the town has an FY23 uh, grant program funded through that state One Stop for Growth, and it was for installing a water main and doing some drainage improvements on Prospect Street. The project is now substantially complete. Uh, we did a walkthrough uh, last month, or earlier this month, November 9th. Uh, Andy, I think, was there, and he at least dropped by. And uh, substantially complete. There was some concern about some uh, water uh, service shutoff boxes, which uh, we'll probably have to take up uh, in greater detail in, in conversations with the water district. Mm -hmm. um, to see, uh, I don't know, are you aware of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just the different style boxes and the yeah. boxes installed have a separate issue. Yeah. So, um, with that said, I mean, we have limited funds, so I don't know that a fix is going to be readily available. So, we'll have to kind of meet with the water district and, and see exactly what can be done. What we can do. Um, yeah. I will say, I don't know, um, um, I was told by the contractor, there were two concerns. One is that they need a separate shutoff right. stick. Yeah. What do you call them? Just a shutoff wrench. Shutoff yeah. wrench. And also there was a concern that, you know, if they're elevated in the ground, they could shift and move. Yeah. But the contractor told me he put very uh, solid uh, plastic sleeves to prevent that exact thing from happening. So that... Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen over the years they do bend and they yeah. build and whatnot. So everything else in town is that one. 
a different style box, the one that we wanted. Yeah. It's just more better for lots. I understand. We uh, we do have an issue though that's that we run out of funds and you know um, but it, it, everything's working. Um yeah, no no issues. No issues. So that's the 23 for Prospect Street. Yeah. And as part of that grant, there's a local commitment to address uh some paving and uh maybe the sidewalks next year. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh the 24 program, uh we've been notified recently that the 24 grant has been awarded and that grant is going to provide full funding for a complete rehabilitation on Otis Street, including the water main, uh, the, the street and sidewalk surfaces, and the drainage components of Otis Street. That was fully fun funded. And uh, we also uh, received funding to complete a master plan uh, for Warren. Uh, we had sought $100,000 but last I heard, it might have been reduced to seventy-five thousand. Okay. So uh, there, I think there are nine primary components of a master plan, and you know, the town working with other staffers at CMRPC may have to sort of pick and choose which of those primary elements are of the greater priority mm -hmm. when and if that time comes. I believe uh, we'll wait and hear from Mr. Uh, Ferreira, but I believe we're still waiting. For contracts, we're aware of the award, but I don't think the town has received contracts at this point in time. Okay, so that's the update on Massachusetts One Stop for Growth. Uh, from what I understand, it, it will be an annual program, so we should, uh, as we become aware mm -hmm. of what's available in the next round, we should uh, make an effort to tap into it. Definitely, yes. Does anyone have questions on the One Stop for Growth program? At all? No. I, I just want to say that the One Stop for Growth program is a state initiative, whereas they've combined multiple state departments under one umbrella. So, uh, like, for example, the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, and Massachusetts DOT, and several others are under this umbrella. So it's it's more than just construction. It's construction. It's design. It's housing. It's planning. Uh, so you know, I would encourage the town to really take a close look at the things that are available through that program. Um, you know, beyond just construction, because there's multiple opportunities. <laughs> so that's the Massachusetts one stop for growth. Complete streets. Uh, no change right as of now on complete streets. Still in the works. Uh, green communities. Yes, I've talked to a, a colleague at CMRPC, Ms. Julia Moore, uh, who indicated that uh, the what did what she phrase them the new energy. Uh, bear with me. I want to use the terminology correctly. Okay, well, it's a new energy management system at the Warren Elementary School. Yeah. It's in place. I understand that it's up and running, and uh, there, there's some closeout uh, things that need to occur between uh, the primary energy consultant in, in the town and the state. But once that's closed out, that would make Warren eligible for another Green Communities grant in, in uh, the next year. Okay. You know? so, uh, anything uh, in, within the municipality that you know addresses potential green initiatives, you know, um, making things more efficient. Uh, I believe you know, such things like automobiles, uh, you know, building enhancements. You know, yeah, we were um, recently was brought to my attention the ability to possibly uh, pursue a uh, an electric or electric hybrid um, sweeper. So, which is something the highway department uh, desperately needs to upgrade, replace. So, uh, I think that's one thing that it would be smart to look into. Obviously, uh, going in that direction, the you know, state really likes anything electric. So, we'll see if that's something that we can uh, take a swing at. It's my understanding that the town is in possession of a planning document that was prepared, you know, through the course of a you know, this this planning initiative, um, 
several things were identified as priorities and, and those priorities should be consulted and um, if needed, the planning document updated to address any new priorities. Mm -hmm. Ms. Julia Moore is, Julia the, Moore, yeah. is the contact for that program. Um, Jim, we just mentioned that the, 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 the new energy management system is up and running at the Warren Elementary School. Yep. And uh, it's pretty close to closing out that program. Yep. So we have one final inspection that Julia Moore has to um, do to set up with the school and the state with Chris um, Mason, I think his name is. Um, he is, uh, has to come out and take a look at the system um, and do the final inspection. And then we can release the final payment. One big one. Pass. Oh, there you go. You're welcome. There's one more if he doesn't have October minutes. October minutes, yeah. September minutes. There's a whole stack of October. There's a whole stack of September. Yeah, I have the. So we've looked at the September. Yeah. Okay, this is October. There's. Well, Mr. Ferreira, I just want to let you know we went through. Uh, some uh, minor things re regarding the uh, ARPA yep. and uh, the MVP and hazard mitigation. Uh, we briefly went over the open space and uh, recreation planning and Lucy Stone updates. Uh, uh, Jeremy is, is still have has uh, complete streets on his radar. And we just now talked about green communities. So with the open space um, and recreation um, with Lucy Stone, we do have a quarterly report that's due December 1st. So uh, I'll be reaching out to Tim and, and Joyce to see, you know, to get the narrative and the updates on on that, so I can submit it. Great. Uh, it was mentioned that yeah, so we had a meeting today. Okay, all right. So we uh, we went over the equipment that was delivered. Okay. And uh, checked through everything, and it, it looks really, really good. So okay. the next step will be installing it, but uh, I don't think the weather is going to quite let us get there. Mm -hmm. It's a little late to pour concrete, but yeah. we'll get it first thing in the spring. Sure. And now that you know how the, the DCR operates and functions, maybe the next round, whatever is chosen, might be a little easier. Huh? Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> if they don't change the process. Yeah. Right. So uh, I believe we're up to Reich's Mill. Okay. Yeah. So we are, we are, we're really excited about this um, uh, EDA grant. Um, we officially uh, went out to uh, procurement with the help of CMRPC, uh, our planning agency, Chris. Um, we were able to put together an RFP that uh, went out and, and, and we drove some competition home um, and uh, really spelled out exactly what we were looking for. Um, we had two respondents um, that uh, submitted uh, for um, to the response. Um, I formed the committee. It was myself, um, Carrie, our tax collector, Don Swistak, the treasurer, Tammy Martin, the accountant, Ed Londigan from Planning Board, a five member committee. Uh, the committee met. We reviewed the proposals, the technical proposals. Uh, the committee then looked at price. Um, and then, um, you know, from the technical proposal side, it was very clear that Weston and Sampson had won uh, the um, uh, and made the best qualifications uh, for for the project. And then from the price side, they also won. So um, they they have been um, named the awarded uh, entity behind that, uh, the master planning for the right bills. Um, and there will be a contract before the Board of Selectmen tomorrow night uh, to uh, consider signing uh, and entering into an agreement with Weston and Sampson. We just got notice yesterday from our friends over at the federal government that they've granted a whole year extension. So we have a whole year from June 14th of 2024 to June 14th of 2025 to complete the project. Thanks. So, we need that, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I guess between the Rice Mill study, mm -hmm. the master plan, which was recently awarded, yep. the MVP, <laughs> the hazard mitigation, uh, we have an ADA plan. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we got all the plans. Yeah, right, right. Well, now we need to bring in some funds to address these things. Yeah. So, 
Thank you. Is there any buyers still out there for potentially looking at the mills? Uh, nobody, not even at that point yet. But yeah. Has anybody else been knocking up, looking around for opportunities? Or... Well, it's my understanding that the, the mills is, is is currently listed on the open market for sale. Okay. Uh, the price has been reduced, from my understanding, from uh, initially a little over a nine million dollars. I think it's a little less now. Um, and you know, I think the. From what I understand, the seller, uh, the owners, are are hard to try to sell. Um, you know, as we've seen around us, yes. there's communities where developers are coming in and, and purchasing old mill buildings as the supply uh, is is so uh, is so great right now for housing. Yeah. Um, people are looking, you know, to you know redevelop old sites uh, into some type of housing. Uh, and so I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, if, if they get some developer at some point to be really serious about that. 8.75 million down from 9.5. Yeah. But now's the time to buy. Now to buy, yeah, right? <laughs> let, me, uh, let me go check we'll my thing. collection. Interest rates are coming down. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'll run to the bank right away. All right. <laughs> I think we pass a hat around. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the Warren ADA transition plan. Yep. Um, with the help of CMRPC, a colleague in, in uh, the CMRPC office had uh, put together an application to the Massachusetts uh, Department of um, uh, the, the Mass Office of Disabilities is what it was uh, to conduct a, an evaluation of all the municipal uh, facilities and services in town and find out what's compliant in terms of accessibility and what it isn't, put together what we call a transition plan with the idea is here's how Warren could transition over time into compliance. So all the buildings, all the open spaces, and all the services that occur within these facilities. So we're waiting, we'll know in December if that has been awarded or not. That's on the on the wait. Yep. Uh, okay, uh, CDBG. Yes, can I see that top sheet there? This one here. Yeah. Yep. So the, the first thing is an update on make sure miscellaneous funds. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'll still nail. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's all. Okay. Yep. There's two. There's two accounts. I I, I've got. got all. I'm gonna say I have multiples of the same. So. Warren uh, presently has two accounts uh, that we call program income and miscellaneous funds. Now these, both those accounts, both those accounts were derived from uh, previous CDBG projects, mainly housing rehab projects, where there was a recapture if a, home, if a homeowner uh, obtained funds to improve their house, and then they had to sell the house. Well, some of those funds were recaptured by the town and put into these two different funds. Okay, we've used a lot of these funds uh, uh, going back into CDBG, namely the School Street project. Uh, we recently committed over thirty-five thousand dollars to School Street. Okay, but uh, there is an additional excess amount. Uh, currently at $19,886.98. And that's miscellaneous funds that are available for town's use. Lastly, there are some specific rules regarding how the town uh, uses these funds, treats these funds, and sort of keeps some funds in, what do I want to use up? Segregated. Segregated. Keep, keeps them aside until a certain lapse of time occurs, okay? Now, there, there's $6,000 that is currently in what we call the program income account. And if, if that doesn't grow significantly over the next uh, four or five months, those funds can be transferred over to miscellaneous, miscellaneous. Okay. which would bring the miscellaneous account up to approximately 25000 So, which would be available for town use uh, as determined uh, necessary. I'd like to see the town use them uh, for CDBG eligible projects because uh, that's where the funds were derived from, but it is not a requirement. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So uh, part of those funds uh, may be needed, uh, miscellaneous funds may be needed on the school and prospect street. And we're waiting on a pay application um, as determined by the contractor and the engineer to see exactly where we stand on that project. Which leads us into the next line item, Mr. Chairman, is the FY21 CDBG School Street, uh, which is now substantially complete. The water line has been installed. The retaining wall has been built. Uh, the, the, the water line, the, the trench patch has been placed over areas that were disrupted. Uh, and that's what was intended as part of that grant. And it's now substantially complete. Uh, what we did not finish was some minor paving at the intersection of Main Street and some loam and seed. And those two items will have to occur in the spring. And they're part of a punch list for the contractor. Okay. So um, we're, as I said, we're awaiting on another uh, pay requisition from the contractor. And there will be some change or there will be a change order that will move some line items around and we'll, we'll know exactly uh, what we have remaining in the budget, if any. I think there is some some that will remain in the budget okay. due to some, some uh, savings we incurred along the way. We did not use all of the resident and engineering services. Uh, and in addition, we deferred some work into the, the next grant. So, um, incidentally, th this is a good time uh, to address some of the, the waterworks that have occurred in town. I, I know there has been concern about uh, the quality of water, but um, I've been told by the engineer and the contractor, when these type of construction projects occur, you are disrupting the entire system. Mm -hmm. We're talking about lines, a lot that still remain that are about 100 years old. And as the construction occurs, it shakes and rattles and rolls. A lot of these water mains, that uh, old water mains are still in town and it remembers some of the sediments that, that, that cling to these old water pipes. Do I have that uh, correct, Andy? Yes. Yeah. And, but that being said, the water district has not been sitting on their hands. Since I've been working with them over the last 20 years, we've addressed, put in new water mains on uh, Cummins Pond Road, Pine Street, Crescent Street, Nelson Street, Bacon Street, Winthrop Terrace, Lombard Street, Moore Avenue, Quaybog Street, and now School and Prospect Street. And, you know, I read one comment in a, in, in a recent social media post. Uh, yeah, for the past 15, 20 years, you know, we've seen all this brown water. Yeah, well, for the past 15, 20 years, we've been addressing new water mains throughout the water district. And, and this is, I'm referring to Warren Water District at this point in time. Um, so, so now we're ready to take a pause and let the water clear up. There's a new water infiltration system. Yeah. There are plenty of new water mains in place. And I think residents will likely experience some clean looking water in the months moving forward. Is that fair to say? Thank you. We have one of the superintendents with us who, who sort of just uh, um, concurred with what I just said. So if anyone has questions, please feel free to call me or, or, or Mr. Ferreira. And, and we can tell you what work has been done and what we're planning on doing in the future. So, so I just wanted that to be said now that I know that we're uh, recording this session. Chris, if I could add something to yes, that. Ma also, um, all of the AC pipes have been removed from the system, except for one small section up on Washington Street. And that's also happened all during the same 15 year period. So what was removed? The asbestos pipes. Oh, asbestos. Yeah. yeah. So that's all new ductile line as well. <clears throat> so a lot has yeah, been done. A lot. Um, so new AC up along Washington, all the CDBG projects, the new infiltration system. So we should be looking pretty good uh, moving forward. There's still still plenty that needs to be done, but a lot has been done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um I uh, just went over School Street, but again, uh, the next thing on the list was again Prospect Street. So the same thing, Prospect Street and School Street occurred under the same construction project. And the water mains for both those streets are in place. And uh, which leads us to the recently awarded FY2223 CBG, which is going to address all the surface improvements and drainage systems of School Street. Okay. 
that has been awarded. Uh, we intend to bid out that project for those surface improvements over the winter and start again another round of construction <laughs> on School Street in the spring. And uh, the town is looking to help by addressing some of the surface improvements on Prospect Street and Richardson Street. Mm -hmm. So I left out Richardson Street, but uh, for those that are listening, we were able to uh, sneak in uh, water main replacement on Richardson Street as well as part of this School Street Prospect Street initiative. So, yeah, combining multiple sources to uh, put that together, that was. You know, a very, very big part of this, doing that entire neighborhood over, um, you know, it didn't want to leave one small section, one road in the middle with that old, old line. So it was, you know, a great team effort to put all those funding, all, all that funding sources together to complete that street. The water district put in a chunk of money with that too. Uh, you know, there was extensions off from Prospect Street and School Street and everything was tied together. And, uh, Happy to say that because of that, uh, the highway department has already committed Chapter 90 funds to Richardson Street and Prospect yeah. Street for uh, resurfacing. And uh, we're also going to do some sidewalk uh, reconstruction on both of those streets as well. So the, all that should be taking place in the springtime to hopefully early summer. Hopefully. You never know what the construction season is going to be. Uh, what the bids come back as, where the contractors stand in, in their projects. So let's just say next year. <laughs> along with Otis Street. Yes, along, along with Otis Street. Recently so. funded through the Massachusetts One Stop for Growth. So it was over 10 years ago, we created a plan for what we call the School Street Neighborhood mm -hmm. to rehabilitate that entire neighborhood. Quaybog Street, Lombard, Moore, Richardson, Prospect, School, uh, Highland View, yeah. Hillside. Uh, Hillside. Hillside. Hillside is the one remaining That's street the one remaining that one, we yeah. have yet to address. But the rest of the neighborhood, if it hasn't been done yet, it will be this next year. So uh, quite a bit of work in that area. So, um, working with Mr. Ferrara, we're, we're now trying to clear what we call administrative clearances for the new grant. We, we, we've completed our environmental review. We've addressed what the state calls special additional conditions, and uh, we should be hearing back from the state uh, within the next week or two to give us a 100% stamp of approval and, and ready to go on that new grant. So once we get that approval, we'll uh, again re-engage an engineer, we'll put bid documents together, we'll bid it out, and hopefully start construction uh, in, the, in the spring of 24. Um, the one question that I have, Mr. Furrer, was uh, have you received any contracts from the state from the one-stop people? Not yet. Not no. yet. But you have been received a award notice anyway. Yes. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So that brings us up to where current. <laughs> and we have some friends to talk about some new stuff. Yes. FY24 CDBG proposed projects. Uh, an income survey. We're discussing River Street, potentially Central Street, Pulaski Street, and also Cutter Park were all listed as potentials for that CDBG grant. In the minutes I, I just handed you folks a little while ago, uh, the October ones, you'll note that uh, I have an update. Uh, that update is the amount that's going to be available. And the next amount, uh, the amount that's going to be available through the CDBG due on March 4th is 950000 So, you know, whatever we can structure up to that amount. Um, so, here we go. I mean, uh, last meeting, I think we sort of were leading towards prioritizing in discussion with our West Warren uh, Water District friends um, what streets what water improvement stage is higher. Mm -hmm. And I believe they, they indicated that River Street was top on their priority list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. River, yes. Uh, could you stand up and you know make yourself known? And <laughs> uh, Andy Olasha, Superintendent, West Warren Water District. Um, yes, River Street would be a very good place to start. Okay. So uh, whatever we do, 
River Street, Central Street, Pulaski Street, any of these streets are going to require an income survey to prove to the CDBG program that they're eligible in terms of the income. And eligibility means that more than 51% of the residents that would benefit through a specific project are of low to moderate income. And moderate income for a household of one is approximately like $58,000 a year. For a household of two, a little bit more, household of three, so on and so forth. So within the next, over the next month, uh, CMRPC is going to engage residents throughout West Warren with the help, hopefully, of the West Warren Water District and, and get their cooperations in completing these surveys to prove eligibility. So um, I, I would, having talked to the Water District, Mr. Chairman, I think they do want to see River Street as part of a project, which should fit nicely within the grant and leave room for possibly two or three other projects. You know, we talked about Central Street as another priority in the district. Is that this yes. though? Yes. Uh, that's a small street. How many households do uh, you think are five, maybe? Seven or eight. Seven or eight, that many? Yeah, not many. Okay. Um, and we're thinking there won't be room for two construction projects, but maybe it can be a construction project and a design project. Mm -hmm. We also talked about uh, uh, Cutter Park, maybe doing a design project for Cutter Park. Um, if we were to do that, we'd have to follow a similar model as we did last year with, uh, uh, which we failed to mention again, we received funding for design improvements to the town common. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd have to form some sort of uh, group or committee you know, beyond just the CDAC to sort of envision what, what type of improvements they might want designed at, at Cutter Park. So if we were to engage a consultant to prepare a cost estimate on what a design and future, future construction might be, well, we have to have some sort of idea about what we want to see there, you know, to serve as the basis of that design and future construction. So that, that would be something that we'd have to look at soon. I, I will also mention that um, last, uh, at the annual meeting um, in this past May, um, the park department has set up funds for improvements to the park, a capital fund, um, and it was funded. You know, there, there was a portion of it funded $25,000 to look at doing capital projects for all our parks. Um, you know, I'm assuming that, that, you know, that they'll make another request in the spring again at our annual, and that will fund even more so now there's a potential that they may have fifty thousand um, dollars in their capital campaign, along with uh, you know maybe uh, a project you know where we get some funding from the CDBG along with some of their capital funding. You know now we got maybe something a, a really decent project to, to move forward within one of the parks. Do those funds have to be earmarked specifically to capital improvements or can it be for consultant services or? Yeah, if it would relate to a capital. Yeah, as long as it, yeah. Yeah. All right, so they can either potentially serve as a match to a future open space and recreation plan mm -hmm. or, you know, engage a consultant to help us flush out what, what's needed for a CDBG application, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we you know, know. talked about the town common too. We probably would want to, you know, invite Sue or in the, their board over to our meeting, you know, to this meeting, and then see if we can, you know, see what their thoughts are on, you know, um, because I know that they were excited about setting up that fund. They're probably going to need a little, maybe a little guidance as to moving a, a project forward. Should we, uh, like, I don't know if they have their own meetings or should they attend yeah, one, yeah, yeah. They, they 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 one of ours or should we make it a joint meeting? Maybe a joint or? meeting, yeah. yeah. You don't happen to know what they typically do? Uh, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. Uh, I think it's around six o'clock on uh, like a three day or something. Uh, once a month or every week? Month, month, like Sunday. Second week in that. Second week of, of like each month, and he's like, you know, they did all these events, right? 
Well, the, this CDBG is going to sneak up on us. Yeah, we need to get uh, this fast. You, know, you think they can attend our next meeting? We really need to move on. Yeah. I mean, that would still be time. If yeah. If it is, if they can do it. If we can put it together for the next meeting. Yeah. We'll try it over here. It would be the 27th. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe we can look at either having two in January, maybe one at the beginning of the month and one towards the end or something like that. I don't know. Well, I, I guess I would recommend that, you know, I have further consultation with the chair here and with the town administrator to see what makes sense in terms of pulling these bodies together. You know, maybe it's more of an ad hoc meeting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, before it arrives at a full committee meeting. They meet the first Monday of the month at 6.30. First Monday? Mm -hmm. So, December 4th? Yeah. 4th. Okay. At what time? 6.30? Yeah. Do they do it uh, remotely here? I'm not sure. I don't think so. So, no, because it's in the parks. Office. Maybe I could call in. Do you go to them? I usually think well, let's make a note that uh, uh, Chris Dumpy will make an attempt to try and uh, uh, attend the, the December 4th meeting, either through call-in or, or personal visit, and then we'll see what we could do about getting the two groups together yes. by, by January. Yeah, we need to yeah, discuss that. Uh, the committee, you know, obviously, we need to figure out what we want to do with Cutter Park, but we also need to think about a, uh, a committee to, to really lock down what we're doing with the town common. Um, that that project is really, obviously, we need to give the engineer something to work with, what we want designed, how we want it, you know, to give more direction on it. And, you know, the Parks Department has to be completely involved in that. So if, you know, we can put together a, a committee to you know, really lock that down. So I think during our last meeting, we put together a short list of short different list, names. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I would suggest that uh, uh, Mr. Olson take those names and confer with, with Mr. Ferreira mm -hmm. and, and see if the two of them could not agree on a, say like a five person committee right, yep. for the town common uh, design. I think okay. Derek on it. Yes, is Derek was listed on it. He's the one that came up with the yep. uh, initial design. So. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Concept. Derek and then uh, Sue Ramsey. Yeah. Um, and then I think we talked about a private individual that... Uh, yeah, uh, trying to it. bring in a, a private, somebody away from the situation just to, to give a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Somebody not so directly involved. So that, I would say, it is not... Uh, a, a pressing matter mm -hmm. like the development of the, yeah. the 24 application yeah uh, if you could maybe you know, come you know sometime you know over the winter you know form that group and then by the spring we can launch because okay. we still need to uh, well consult needs to be hired for that correct well yeah excuse me i apologize for my phone So I will just say some other things. Uh, I'm writing this. I can't, like, I, I shouldn't say can. It would be difficult for me to write many different projects into the 24 application. I'd like to confine it to, like, three or four at most, and they still have to fit within that 950000 So uh, I guess if I could ask them, committee if, if we're definitely indeed recommending river street as one of the priority projects yeah yeah let's make a motion on that to put river street as one of the prizes we're going to make a motion i'll make, I'll make the motion to put river street on as the cdb um grant application i have a second second all in favor Rich Hacker, aye. Steve Crystal, aye. <laughs> Jeremy Olson, aye. Carol Sosville, aye. Motion passes. No, I know Central Street and Pulaski are important too, but we're at a, a 
a point that we might have to pick and choose, you know. Um, so Do I, we I want to hold off on Pulaski until the master plan is. I, I would say, yeah, yeah, because it might your your rights bill may address some of the issues mm -hmm. with Pulaski mm -hmm. Street. Yeah, so we may be able to get money for it. From Maybe that. so, yeah. Right, so and yeah. there's nothing going on there anyway. So. so so I'm also holding off on a motion request for Central Street at this point in time okay. um, until you know the committee and others have a chance to consider uh, different things. Uh, like one thing, I know uh, a, a buddy in the area town had had. Uh, applied for and received funding for a housing production plan. I don't necessarily know uh, what a housing production plan is supposed to do, but I do know that every grant that I go on applying for asks if the town has completed a housing production plan, you know? So um, I think it's, it's, it's a tool used by the state to encourage the development of both affordable housing and market rate housing and where that development occur, how it should occur and where it could occur and so on and so forth. And uh, presuming a housing consultant would, would do that project. And uh, I don't think they cost a whole lot of money, perhaps 20 or $30,000 to complete. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying it's a priority, but I will say like, uh, if you, I asked you to if you wanted to take a look at that survey. Yeah. If you notice, like the third or fourth question was, "Have you completed a housing production sure. plan?" You know. <laughs> so I just, I guess, I want to put it on our radar that it's something they're plan. looking. Yeah. That we, you know, if, if it's on all these applications, and clearly they yeah. they hold value in that. So mm -hmm. in choosing hope for, you know, maybe it gives you a little, it's you know, extra edge. points. Yeah, yeah, a few extra points on it. So I think that's definitely then something we need to look more into doing. Also, if the ADA application that was submitted to the Mass Office of Disabilities does not get awarded, we still have plenty uh, adequate time to include that in the 24 application. And those are really easy to write and they're not that expensive. Okay. You know, so I think for maybe $30,000, we could complete a, a complete brand new uh, ADA plan through CDBG if the Mass Office of Disabilities does not come through. Um, so, what do we think about adding the town common as a project? As a project, you know, we can't well, we because can't. we need to have it designed before you pursue. Uh, uh, we have money for design; it was just awarded. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. we just don't have the design yet. Uh, and we need the design complete to seek capital improvements. All right. Um, so maybe pot potentially though design for Cutter Park yeah. could yeah. be the next one on this. But I think, uh, like we've said already, I'd like to discuss that with the Parks Department first and get their input on it. Obviously, they need to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, we had a visitor, Ms. Carol Zins, from the uh, Quaybog Valley. Uh, Community Development Corporation, who uh, was pitching a, a, an idea to fund uh, services for seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we uh, had a brief discussion about yeah. it, and uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure where we stand on that. Do you have a? We did fund a, a senior yeah. outreach program, didn't we? Right, last yeah. year. Last year, yeah. They're yeah. just looking for future. Oh, you the know. same program. Yes, it's it's already expanded as well. They've taken on more uh, more residents in Warren. She's uh, made that clear that they're, you know, the the they their their um, basically their services have been you know taken and been you know taken used by the some extra residents that they originally didn't have. And uh, they would like to say they want to continue to fund it because it's a unique program that uh, is not generally offered. So for you know um, people with disabilities and, and, and an elder state where they can't, uh, whether it's they're blind and they can't go shopping or they need assistance in that somebody brings them groceries or they can't because they can't afford to pay a regular service to do it. So. I think it was a, a really solid program. It's just, again, I think finding um, a suitable funding source for them that's consistent, that's not 
we're not just throwing money out there and then it dries up and then the program dies. I think it's more important that they find that consistent funds. Well, so I'll say this, the select board approved giving them funds last year, I believe from ARPA? Yeah. ARPA, yeah. With the understanding that we would not repeat it and that they would find their own funding. I mean, that being said, I'm still in support of it and I yeah. would probably vote to fund it, but I have to say that we can, I don't know that we can do it every year. No. I think they really have to figure out a way to fund it. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they're adding people, it's going to be more expensive. So, so I, I guess I concur with what Mr. Olson said. You know, CDBG can be a good source of funding for public social services, but it is not, it can't be considered like a re reliable annual. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you start with a net realm and then you stop, you know, where does it end? You know, start and stop, start and stop, you know, so that makes it difficult uh, to, to, to do it. Um, I guess I would ask the committee to keep an open mind should other sources uh, of funds become available and we get approached with a, a, a real priority need, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to definitely address the, the uh, issue of, of meetings, uh, recognizing that we always try to meet on the fourth Wednesday of each month. The fourth Wednesday in December is December 27th. Uh, just looking at the faces, I can tell that that is not really a palatable uh, <laughs> date for, for another meeting. Uh, perhaps this committee could uh, consider passing on the December one, but moving up the January one. Okay. Does that seem like a reasonable? Doing more of an early January meeting? Yes. Like the 11th, maybe? Or uh, uh, the 10th. 10th. Uh, 10th would be the second Wednesday of January. Yeah, I think I can do that. I think it'd be all right. How's that look for you guys? Fine. So it would be at this January 10th meeting, we'd have to 100% agree on the initiatives that we want to be presented in the March 4th application. Okay, one of them, if it qualifies, will be River Street, and then two or three others, depending on, uh, well, we need to find a budget for River Street. Um, uh, with your approval, I could engage a co consultant that could give us some numbers for that. Yeah. You know, um, and then two or three other projects, depending on how the, the numbers work out for River Street. Okay. Okay. Um, so that said, I mean, if anyone is listening or people here in the audience, if you could spread the word to anticipate both some letters and some knocking on some doors along River Street in, in West Warren for the purpose of qualifying that street for future improvements. And when I say future improvements, my concept is more than just water. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll comprehensively improve the street, you know. Uh, if there are new drainage needs. Drainage, there is some drainage yeah. needs on yeah. River Street as well. Yeah. So please cooperate. Uh, you know, if you see me or one of my colleagues uh, knocking on doors. <laughs> All right. Well, the uh, on River Street, that main also feeds those brick blocks on Main Street. They what? The, the, that water main feeds the brick blocks on Main Street, which is across from the post office. Mm -hmm. So that water line feeds those houses. Both, so, both sides both of sides. River Street. Yeah. So if you do the income study, you want to get those houses on Main Street as well. Oh, right. So yes. River Street goes between them. Between them. So on both sides of it. Yeah. Yes. The yes. backs of the houses on Main that. Street. Right, okay. Yeah. The yeah. only addresses on one side. So the Main on Main does not necessarily feed the, the, the old mill housing. Correct. Yeah. I get it. Yep. Um, what are we talking? Maybe 20 units, maybe? 24, something like that? I have a customer list thing. Oh, that'd be perfect. Great. Thank you so much. And this is uh, Ms. Kathleen Duncan, yes. the West Warren Water District. Thank you so much, Kathleen. It starts with the arrow there. Sorry? It starts right here at the arrow. Okay, got it. Anybody else need a coffee? No. I'm not going to knock on doors with you, I don't think. I'm going to knock on doors with you, I don't think. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, the community development strategy seems to be a work in progress. Uh, we, we we know it all up here, right? Yes. But we got to put it on paper what, what some of the priorities are. And, and hopefully these planning initiatives are the exact source documents to extract those from, whether it's the MVP or, you know, uh, hazard mitigation or the ones that we know of as uh, an operating committee. Uh, we need to get the priority projects all written down on paper and both Warren and West Warren uh, so they'll serve as a ready document to go for once we, we identify funding. Mm -hmm. So it's a work in progress. Um, we, I've been teasing for another committee member. I know, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's hard. People, yeah, they, they sound interested, but when it comes time to like, hey, come come to the meeting, you know, uh, they tend to shy away. Any interested parties here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a resident of Warren. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. No. No, that's right. <laughs> I know uh, Jim McKeon is, and uh, he's always involved. I don't know if he wants to take on something else or not, but I'd be up to you, Jim, if you're interested. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. Why don't you talk to He's Jeremy and Mr. Ferrara? I don't but he does a lot. You know, he, he doesn't have a lot going on. We, <laughs> we, we only meet once a month. So, you know, and, and again, the purpose is so, like, consultants don't come in and feel like they're steering the ship. We've got a body, a local body of both staff and residents that, that develop the projects and they. They, they steer me, you know, so it's a very important that uh, that sort of feedback gets back to our funders. You know, they, they don't want to see people like me developing projects. They want to see the projects develop from within. So that's why it's important. You know? Well, if anybody out there is interested, please reach out to myself or Mr. Ferrara um, joining the CDAC. You know, obviously, uh, We'll, uh, we'd love to talk to anybody who uh, wants to be involved and certainly give you a shot at being on the committee. So hopefully uh, hopefully we get someone. So uh, if I could just loop back to some of our opening remarks and, and, and whatnot. So I think it's been recognized that I am now uh, officially a retired uh, state employee, but I'm working on a part-time basis with the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission. And, and by and large, at least for the time being, as, as long as you folks want me around, uh, they say it's fine if I continue to work with Warren in developing projects and writing grants for Warren. And I'm pretty much limiting my, my work to that for now until such time as that I'm confident that there are others that can, will assume the mantle and I, I, you know you guys feel that you're, you're moving in the right direction. But at least for the time being, it's my intent to develop this 24 application and at least uh, see a good part of this, the recently awarded 22 and 23 uh, programs advance, including the, 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 the school street phase two and the town common design. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where we stand. And we're, we're looking, CMRPC is looking uh, for, for um, new, new staff. They, they, they thought they had a couple, but they withdrew their, their applications last minute, so they're still looking. So, We've got Joe. Joe is We've available. Got Joe. But Joe and Andrew Lowe uh, are it, and there are at least uh, eight other communities that you know, we presently work with, so they're, they're, they're stretched a little bit. Yeah. Well, we, uh, I know I personally appreciate your uh, involvement and your help in our community, and I assume my... Yeah, it's amazing what we've done over the last few years. It's yeah. amazing. It may, yeah. I that's that's for every, every bit of it has been right along with your help and assistance. And uh, we appreciate we it. Yeah. And we'd love that you continue to work with us. Uh, as long as as you're willing to come work with us, we're definitely uh, are, are and I just open want to arms say, I to you. Mr. Furrer and I, we've really hit a stride. And, yes. you know, we've sort of, you know, I've, I've come to understand what he expects out of me. And, and I, I kind of know what he has to deliver for the community. So that's been working out pretty well lately. So that's excellent. Excellent news. Oh, so yeah. That's, you know, again, we're, 
we have so many things going on, so many improvements, so many grants, so many opportunities. You know, we need to keep this rolling and, and uh, keep building our community. So, With regard to River Street, uh, I'm going to need evidence to support the application. It's like, have there been emergency repairs? You know, um, you know, have you had clients call and report a low volume, low water pressure, things of that nature that will help support an application for need? Okay. You know, so if you just scour back in your records and whatever you can pull up will be very helpful. Okay. We're going to do minutes. Oh, that's right. We circle back around the minutes, improving the minutes. So we go back to I think I provided September, uh, September and, and October. October. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> My reliable secretary was I apologize. Where's your granddaughter? Where's she hiding? She's sitting that laying down back there. Uh, uh, video game. Should we make the change on the um remember we deferred the minutes in the September meeting? I uh I had put in the, the initials it was Rich, who had made the motion. If one person could oh, mock up a copy. Yeah, I think I actually changed the copy I brought. I don't remember who I gave it to. Maybe I have it. <laughs> yes, I think here it is here. Yeah, because that's what I said. Uh, Rich Ihawker made the motion. I already changed it in this, this one. So Rich Ihawker made the motion to table the minutes in September 2023 meeting, and Steve Crystal second the motion. The motion passed. <laughs> So that was the, the change in September that I noticed. Um, was there anything else in September? Were there correct people there? Uh, in September, uh, oh. Jeremy, Rich, Steve, Jim, Joe, Joe, uh, Joe attended, yes. uh, remotely. Remotely, and, yeah. And Carol, were you at the September one? You're absent. And then, no, September. No, I he was absent. I was yeah, absent. you were remote. Okay. He was absent. That's yeah. right. So yeah, and it's here. She was remote. And Jim is spelled with two E's in one A. What? Attending? Oh. Two E's and one I, I knew that. <laughs> Ferrera. Oh, uh, Ferrara. I don't know if you did that. Ferrera. I knew that. F-E-R-R-E-R-A. Two R's? Yep. E R. It's correct, except for the um the A and E. Yeah. Change the middle A to a Got to an E. Got it. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else in September? Uh, erase that line seen closed. So under FY21 school street, uh, I didn't provide the updates, but uh, I think we we did go over them. I think I'll just put in a oh, line. Okay. So insert brief line. Okay. Okay. So if you'd approved based on the insertion of a, a, a brief update on that and then the corrections that you handed me. So I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from September 27th, 2023 as amended. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Rich Hacker, aye. Steve Crystal, aye. Jeremy Olson, aye. The motion passes, the minutes are accepted. I think at some point in time I need to convey digital documents for you all okay. probably, right? Sure. Yes. All right. Uh October. then we have the October minutes. Which are right here. Yeah. yeah. I think they were. Oh. oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you guys were here last last month, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were here. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna. Get thank you so much. Well, yes, thank you guys. You, okay, well, I'll, I'll visit with you guys directly. All right. Okay. Maybe okay. let me know when your board next meets. Perhaps Tuesday next week. Yeah. Yeah. Senior Center, five thirty. <laughs> yes, thank you. I will get in the information. All right, thanks.
Thank you. October one should be pretty good because I attended that one. Yeah. <laughs> I can the uh, wait, no. Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Finally getting that done, yeah. Well, hopefully it clears up some of the unknowns and mm -hmm. makes it more palatable to an investor, you know. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. He's gone. He's gone. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I was gone too late. I uh, does anybody have any no, questions well, on the minutes? Chris, do you want a water? No, I get some new card. Okay. Any, cor make, any corrections? No. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the October 25th, 2023 minutes. Do I have a second? Steve Crystal second. All in favor? Which I hacker aye. Steve Crystal aye. Jeremy Olson aye. Carol Sosville aye. You know, yes, motion passes to accept the October minutes. Okay. Uh, any comments, new business, anything left to discuss? Uh, so just we'll lock into our next meeting is scheduled for January. Uh, 10. 10 at 4 p.m. Yeah. And we're here, and we, the, the, the emphasis will be uh, locking in our proposed projects for the FY24 CBG. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Hacker, aye. Crystal, aye. Crystal, aye. Jeremy Olson, aye. Carol oh, Sass, oh, aye. Oh, 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 hold on. on. Can we reopen? Okay. Well, we, it's not a big deal. He said, "I we're done." Okay. Uh, we have a well. A, a